What's going on, everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So the stock market did well today. S&P 500 up 0.9%. Dow Jones went up 0.7%. The NASDAQ 100 up 1%. And the Russell 2000 went down about 0.4% on the day. And today we're going to be talking more about the stock market, breaking down some technicals, going over seven beaten down stocks that I'm looking to buy now. And I also want to share with you guys what I did in the stock market today, stocks I own right now, and in general, where my head is at right now as a trader and as an investor. So if you guys find value, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're so close to 20k subscribers. Make sure to subscribe and also get yourself four stocks from Webull. Join the Discord chat, the Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. They're all 100% free of charge. And by the way, guys, that Webull promotion does run out here in a couple days at the end of December. So make sure to go down below and claim your four stocks right now. Now, so let's get into it. S&P 500 today broke out. We hit an all-time high, 3740.51. And if you guys watched my video yesterday, watched my videos last week, we were talking about the potential head and shoulder that was forming here, head and shoulders, on the S&P 500. I mean, take a look here on the hourly chart. We can see the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder was potentially forming as we were seeing a lot of resistance under 3700 and 3712, both of which were previous all time highs for the S&P 500. And I said to you guys, hey, watch it. If we end up dumping under 36. 80, 3650 under this 180 SMA on the four hour chart, or actually, no, this hourly chart. I said if we dumped under that, that would be the completion of the right shoulder, or actually the start of the completion of the right shoulder, and that would have been pretty bearish. But take a look at what happened. The flip side happened. We didn't get rejected at 3712. In fact, we broke right out of it. So, what that means is the SP 500, the head and shoulder pattern, did not not complete. It's actually breaking out. We broke out of 3712. We broke out of 3726, the previous all-time high. And now it seems like, honestly, we're, we're trading above it. I mean, we are trading above the previous all-time high at 3726. And that would be a level to, to look at to see maybe if the S&P pulls down a bit, maybe it holds 3727, 3726 as a support, new support since it was that previous resistance, the previous all-time high. So very bullish day today for the markets. Look at 37.25, maybe 37.12 to play as supports here in the next couple of days if the S&P does end up pulling back. And of course, we don't have any resistance levels other than 37.40 because we're trading right at those all-time highs. And why did we get a spike in the markets today? Well, President Donald Trump signed the legislation into law on Sunday after days of saying he opposed the $600 stimulus check. So he finally signed it into law on Sunday, and uh, that was last night. <clears throat> and I believe the futures were doing pretty well last night when that news came out. They were up a good chunk, and that obviously translated into today's session. So that's what the market did today in terms of the S&P 500. In terms of SPY, which is also pretty much the S&P 500, but it's an ETF that tracks it, some key levels to watch out for are 372, right? We closed right under 372, which is that resistance from back in the middle of December. So Watch out how it uh, uh, reacts at that point. Do we break out of there? If so, we could be seeing a bit of a rally from there. And the, uh, the Dow Jones at this point in time, guys, also broke out. Finally, right? We've been trading in this channel literally all of December with support at about 29,800 and resistance at about 30,200 to 250. We've been literally bouncing back and forth, boom, 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 the past month, and we finally picked direction today. We broke out of 30,250, hit an all-time high at 30,500, and we're consolidating a bit, which makes sense, right around 
30,400, and that's a very good sign for the Bulls here on the Dow Jones. And at this point, I could see this thing going 31,000 in the short term. I think that's very possible. And when it comes to the NASDAQ, also an all-time high. We broke out of this resistance from 12,750. Um, that was the resistance. We broke out of there. We squeezed out. The ascending triangle played out. Remember, we called this out couple days ago, I believe that was on Friday's video last Friday, we talked about the ascending triangle forming here on the NASDAQ, and if we broke uh, 12,750, it's likely to squeeze up. We did exactly that today, hit all-time highs at 12,861, and at this point in time, guys, hey, the markets are cruising. Stimulus is what the markets wanted, right? And they're they're pretty uh, they're pretty bullish by the looks of it. And sure, like I said in previous videos, I still think we're going to see a pull down soon, probably in the first couple of weeks, or maybe after the first couple of weeks of 2021, we're likely to see a pull down. Uh, but until then, I mean, the markets look bullish, and I'm going to remain bullish until we do see a sharp. Uh, drop until the technicals honestly tell me otherwise. And then uh, Russell 2000 today, did this hit an all-time high? It might have. Let me take a look here. Um, it did, 2026. So all of the indexes hit all-time highs today. Pretty, pretty impressive. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. As always, what are your thoughts on the markets? What are you doing right now? Are you buying? Are you selling? And if you guys are enjoying the video, hit that like button. I challenge you guys, let's try and get 400 likes on this video, 400 likes, so make sure to hit that like button down below. I would really, really appreciate it. So what did I do today? Well, I did some stuff. I cut some losses. I day traded NNDM, um, which was pretty interesting. So let's talk about that first. Nano Dimension, we got some news today. And if you guys remember, yesterday we called out this head and shoulder forming on NNDM. We called that out in yesterday's video and we said, look at it. If we fail breaking out of 920 here on the 5-day five 5 minute right where that 180 SMA is, if we fail breaking out of that, we might be going down to complete that right shoulder. And we got a good catalyst to really assist that right shoulder uh, completing today. We got news that they're doing another direct offering. They're selling 33.5 million shares, 33.5 million shares, direct offering at $7.50. So once that news came out, boom. Right shoulder completed here. We hit 750, and then we started to rebound from there. And the truth is, guys, I actually picked up shares pre-market at $7.98. And it's very important for you guys out there, whether you're using Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, whether you're using Webull, to go and get your pre-market trading approved and after-market trading um, approved, right? Because a lot of the time when you open up an account, it doesn't let you trade pre-market or after-market hours, at least with Fidelity and TD, right? You actually have to get on the phone and call them or fill out a little application online and then they approve it for you so you're able to actually buy stocks pre-market. And I believe Webull, once you sign up, you can actually use pre-market trading right away and you can trade as early as 4 a.m. on the East Coast and aftermarket hours as late as 8 p.m. So make sure to also get your four stocks from Webull link down below. But the beauty of pre-market trading is you can get in on massive dips like this um, before a lot of the volume really starts kicking in. And in this case, I got in at 798. And we talked about this on Instagram this morning at Stosser Fest. We called out uh, this stock. So make sure to follow me there and in the Discord chat, right? And I said, Watch out for it, guys. And we saw that relief rally, and I ended up getting out at $8.52. So it was a pretty big move, quite honestly, guys. Um, and it was a pretty nicely timed move as well from $7.98. I rode it pretty much up to the peak here, a little bit under again at 852. Got out with a 6% gain, a little bit over 6%. And with such a nice move right off the bat, I kind of stopped trading for the rest of the day after that, other than cutting two losses here in my swing positions, which was pretty interesting, guys. We saw the markets go up, and honestly, the markets were dominated today by big tech. I know you can't see my face, but down here I have the tech stocks watch list. Facebook was up almost 4%. 
Apple was up 3.5%. Amazon was up 3.5%. So we saw a lot of big tech names do well. They, they held up the markets. But a lot of stocks in my watch list were actually red. And two swings I was in, Square and NVIDIA, I had to cut both of these. Square I was in at $233.30. Cut out of that at about, I think, 1.5%. Let me show you guys here on the intraday chart. We went down very quickly to 220 this morning, guys. And I got out before that. Got out at about, yeah, it was right here, about 227. I cut the loss there, a little bit over 2% loss. And NVIDIA, I also cut the loss, which I told you guys I would if we were to gap under this four-hour chart um, support, which we, we got a little bit under there today. Um, got in the low 510s, which I didn't really like. So I got out of that position. And both of these were not big positions by any means. I just nibbled a little bit of each. Um, but at this point, I wanted to just cut the losses, get into cash, and wait and see if these confirm any sort of, uh, of a rebound. And if they do, if they start rebounding, I might get back into them. But at this point, I'm playing it a bit safe, guys. So that's what I did. I cut SQ, I cut NVIDIA, both at about 2%. And I day traded NNDM, and I'm still in SLV, which is a silver play. It's an ETF that tracks silver. I'm still in that just to have some precious metal exposure. That did well today, up 2%. I'm in at about 23 bucks. That's a much longer-term swing. Honestly, guys, I'm looking six-plus months with that one. And I've been in it for a while, at least a couple weeks at this point. And Workhorse is another one I'm still in at 22 bucks, which did not do well today, down 7.2%. And I'm holding this one, uh, honestly, because I think there's upside to over 25 bucks. I think we could break 25, start to run to the high 20s, and that's kind of where my uh, sell target is on Workhorse. So that's what I did today, guys. Let me know in the comments what you did as always. Are you buying? Are you selling right now? Are you just holding on to your existing positions with some cash on the sidelines? Maybe if the market does end up dipping... I would love to know your strategy and what you're doing right now. So <clears throat> let me uh, let me get into some stocks now, guys. We have seven beaten down stocks that, honestly, in the midst, <clears throat> my voice keeps cracking right now. What's going on here? In the midst of the market being at all-time highs, we actually have a lot of stocks that, overall, yeah, they've still done well in the past six months, but... In the past couple of weeks, they've all taken a pretty big hit. And these stocks, I mean, I think they're bound for a rebound, quite honestly. And stock number one here out of seven, and by the way, if you guys stick till the end of the video, we have three bonus ones to go over, so make sure to stick till the end of the video. Stock number one here is Open, also known as Open Door Technologies, formerly known as IPOB. This merger went through about a week ago. It started trading on the NASDAQ exactly a week ago. Um, under ticker symbol open. And ever since that happened, the stock is getting crushed. I mean, it's down over 25%. And like I said, a lot of these stocks in the past six months, which is what you're seeing here, the four hour chart, in the past six months, they're all still up. They're all still up a good chunk. But in the past couple of days, past couple of weeks, they've just been clobbered, which is why I'm calling this video seven beaten down stocks, right? But again, three bonus ones at the end. So make sure you stay tuned. And this is one that I'm looking at. Honestly, it's approaching the 180 SMA four hour chart, which we've held like clockwork in the past couple of weeks as we've sold off. And Again, like I said, it's so oversold, beaten down. The RSI is almost under 30, and we know with the RSI, anything approaching 30 is oversold, and anything approaching 70 plus is overbought. And another thing worth mentioning is here, yeah, we're at the 180 SMA support, but we're also at a previous resistance from back in the end of November, early December, at about $23.50. So this is a very big spot for open, guys. If we're able to hold 23 350 $23, $24, which today seems like we're trying to, but I'm not convinced quite yet. I want to see tomorrow, the next day, what goes down. If we're able to hold those levels, I can see a lot of upside in this one. So I have some cash, and this is another big reason why I got out of Square and NVIDIA, right? I have some cash now 
more cash to play with to maybe get into stocks like this, which are more beaten down than Square and NVIDIA, right? So I'm looking at open. Another one here is Snow, also known as Snowflake, which is also pretty beaten down despite it being up over 100 bucks per share from its low, actually about 100 bucks per share from its low at 208. I mean, that was back in the end of September, so it's still up a good chunk from 208 to 302, but recently it's down from 429 to 302. So it's down almost 30% from its peak, and what you guys are seeing here is we're right around that 180 SMA 4 hour chart. Very similar to what we saw with Open Door. And I think this could be a potential bounce spot for Snow, but I'm a bit more skeptical than uh, IPOB, or actually not IPOB, it's open now. I'm a bit more skeptical with Snow because we're seeing a potential head and shoulder here. I mean, it's playing out right in front of our eyes, right? Take a look. We have, I mean, take a look here, the left shoulder. If this wants to work, let me see if it works here, guys. Left shoulder right here. It's not letting me do the circles uh, drawing, but we have the left shoulder here, head, and this could be the right shoulder with it completing after we break 300, maybe into the mid 200. So if that happens, I'm not looking to jump into snow if it breaks this 180 SMA. But if it holds the 180 SMA, we start popping up into 305, 310, 315, that could be a nice potential breakout level where we could have a lot of ground to cover back up to mid 300 hundreds maybe even higher than the mid 300 so i'm watching snowflake closely t doc is another one tdoc which we called out a couple videos ago on this downtrending channel i told you guys it's very similar to the pattern we saw with activision blizzard a couple weeks ago and now take a look at where activision blizzard is guys we called this out at about 80 bucks 79 bucks on the potential breakout from this downtrending uh channel it broke out and now it's doing so well, and I think TDOC is another one that's similar to that, that is still in its early stages, right? We broke out of the, the downtrend last week. We hit 213. Now we're pulling back down. We're going to test the resistance as a support now, the resistance of this downtrending channel as support, and we'll see. If we break 200 back to 205, 210, this could be a very good candidate for a nice move up to maybe 230. So I'm watching TDOC closely. And Boeing, guys, I've been getting a lot of questions on Boeing, um, ticker symbol BA here. And this is one that we talked about a couple weeks ago. We said there's big resistance at 240. If we got rejected there, we're likely to see a sell-off. And we got exactly that. We got hit at 240, 245, sold off to about the 180 SMA as of right now. And what we are seeing here, guys, is... A pretty interesting chart, and I'll be honest, it's not the best looking chart out there, but what we are noticing is it's still downtrending, but at the same time, it's uptrending, right? I mean, take a look. Let me show you guys this. Look here on the 30-day chart, right? Or maybe the 90-day chart. We're still making lower highs. 244 is the high, made a bunch of lower highs since then. And we're also making higher lows. We held 205 at a higher low. We popped. And now we're about to test 215 as a, as maybe another higher low. And if we end up breaking the downtrend here on the 20-day uh, chart, or let's see if you can see it on the... Can you see it here? There we go. On the 20-day chart, if we break this downtrend, it's all about the downtrend here, guys. If this breaks on the hourly chart, let's say we go to 220, 225, that could be a nice breakout play on Boeing. So I'm watching that very closely. And another one here is XPEV, ticker symbol XPEV. This is one that is also downtrending, making lower highs, but also at a potential higher low here, right around this $38 level. And what a what a bad day for uh, XPEV today, guys. And the Chinese EVs did not do well today. I mean, NEO was down 4%. I'm sure Li Auto was also down. Let's take a look here. Li Auto down 8%. So XPEV took the worst of the blow, down almost 10% on the day. And we're, again, making lower highs, but we're also at a potential higher low here. And we're also at a support level at about 38 39 bucks, which was a previous resistance point. So this is one that's beaten down a ton. It was arguably overbought. 
back when it was 78 bucks. It's down over 50% there. But now that we're down a lot, I think it's worth really considering it. Not to buy it. I'm not saying buy it, but it's worth watching it. Let's put it that way, right? And, and mind you guys, don't buy any stock that I'm talking about. You must always do your own research, do your own due diligence. And if you understand it on your own, and maybe my video supplemented your decision making, and you fully understand the trade on your own, then maybe go go for it. Uh, but don't just blindly buy stocks based on everybody's or anybody's opinion out there. That's very important. So XPEV is looking pretty decent. I mean, it's still in a downtrend, but I think if it breaks mid-40s, this could be a nice momentum play back up. And another one here is SBE. And before you guys say, Stas, you're crazy. This stock's not beaten down. Before you say that, take a look. It's down about six bucks per share. It's down about 14%, 13, 14%. So that's decently beaten down. I know it's crazy, but that's decently beaten down. Although it is up, I mean, a ton this uh, these past couple weeks. I mean, it's up like 70%. Uh, but bear with me, guys. It's down 13% in the past day. And at this point, I think SBE wants to hold. 43 bucks, 44 bucks. I mean, that is a, a resistance point from back in the end of November, back in the beginning of December. And you guys can see if I extend this to the right, this would be the perfect spot for it to hold the uptrend. And one thing worth noting, if it fails at 43 to hold, we're going to be going straight down to $39, $40, right around that 50 SMA on this four-hour chart, which honestly would also be a pretty decent entry point in my opinion. So watch out for SBE. It's not that beaten down like some other stocks, but still it's down about 14% from its peak. Um, so if it holds 43, maybe we pop up back to mid-40s, high 40s. But if we break 43, 40 bucks is where we're going in my honest opinion and from there we could also make um, a nice bounced uh a nice maybe bounce back play uh, sort of move. So watch out for SBE. Tattooed Chef is another one. And before you say stocks again, this is not being down. It is down a good chunk from its peak, down about 12%. And from its all-time high, it's down about 20%. So it's down a decent amount. And we're seeing finally a bit of a pull down here before um, or actually after we saw a massive pop where it got a bit overbought, right? It got to about 26 bucks. It pulled down. And it's crazy, guys. We talk about the stock at 1850. We call the breakout there. And after we started talking about it, a lot of the big YouTubers started talking about Tattooed Chef. Like, uh, who was it? I'm pretty sure it was Jeremy over at Financial Education and Meet Kevin. They both started making videos about tattooed chef and then once that happened i'm not saying they're manipulating the price guys i'm not saying that but once that happened it's crazy how timing works the stock went ballistic i mean it went from you know 1850 i think they started talking about it at about 20 bucks and then went to 26 dollars and again i'm not accusing of anybody pumping a stock i'm not saying anything of that nature but it's pretty interesting how that correlated. Um, interesting, guys. Pretty interesting, right? But yeah, 20 bucks to $26. Now we're pulling down to $23, right around that 50 SMA four-hour chart. So watch Tattooed Chef here on this dip. I think there's some money to be made there. And if you guys stuck till the end, you're going to get three bonus stocks right now. Let me know in the comments if you did stuck or stuck or yeah. If you did stuck till the end, or if you did stick till the end, I can't talk today, guys. Let me know in the comments if you stuck till the end. And the one stock here out of the bonus three is Lemonade, L-M-N-D. This is another one that's been clobbered in the past day or two. It's down 22%, so it's technically in a bear market. Remember, anything over 20%. Uh, from its peak, if it falls a stock index, whatever, if it falls 20% from its peak, it's considered a bear market, whether it's in one day it drops that or if it's in a, a couple weeks, whatever. And in this case, it was one day. It's down about 20%. Um, this is one that's right around the 50 SMA, and this pull down was very much needed. It was overbought. RSI was screaming overbought, and now the RSI is actually oversold. And I think right around this 50 SMA could be a potential dip buy, maybe a relief rally play off of this if the uptrend continues. And if this breaks the uh, 50 SMA four-hour chart, 
I think we might be going lower, maybe back into the 90s, 95, maybe right around this 180 SMA. So take a look at Lemonade. Another one here is Costco. I got this uh, question in my uh, comments yesterday. What about Costco, Stas? The truth is Costco is looking pretty decent. One, one thing we could say about it is it's trying to break this downtrend it's been in ever since the beginning of December at about 390. It's trying to break out and pop out of that, which would be great. We could see about 4 or 5% upside if that does happen. But another thing I am seeing is maybe a head and shoulders playing out, which maybe it's starting to. Left shoulder here, head right here, right? And if we fail breaking out, I'd say of 375, right around this neckline that could be forming, if we fail breaking 375, you know what could happen with this? We might end up seeing a dump off, and that would be the right shoulder if it were to dump to about 355 to 360. So be careful there with Costco. There is some upside if we break 375, like I said, up to maybe 380, 385, but if we fail at 375, we could see that right shoulder form. And of course, another one here is Ali. Baba, guys. I've mentioned this before, so I don't want to bore you guys. Alibaba is down over 30% from its peak. So this is very interesting for both long-term and for maybe a short-term bounce-back play. So watch out for 220 support here on Alibaba. We might see a relief rally up to maybe 240, 245. So that's pretty much it. Look out for those stocks, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And also, make sure to hit the like button. Again, I challenge you all 400 likes make sure to get this video to 400 likes down below and we're so close to 20k subscribers just subscribe guys we're gonna hit that milestone together it's it's massive and as a matter of fact let me show you guys my dog how she how how excited she is about us being so close to 20,000 subscribers and in reality she's actually sleeping right next to me but I'll wake her up and show you guys Hello! Look at her, guys. She is the cutest thing, right? Her name's Ibiza. I've showed her on the channel before. Let me see if you guys can even see this right now. Let me pull up this OBS. Yeah, here she is. She wants us to get to 20,000 subscribers. So, yeah, Ibiza, say something. <laughs> but yeah, guys, again, thanks for watching. As always, you guys are awesome. Don't forget to, again, hit the like button, subscribe. Make sure to get yourself four stocks from Weeble down below. That does run out here in the next couple of days. And don't forget to also join the Discord chat and the Facebook group, like Ibiza said. Right, Ibiza? Yeah, yeah, tell them to, tell them to join that Discord chat Facebook group. And uh, make sure to stay safe. And again, happy holidays. Keep crushing the markets. I appreciate you guys watching. Love you guys. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.